one visitor described today's haunted place well. They said the atmosphere was awful. I can only describe it as pure filth, dark and heavy. Today, we will dissect the ancient Ram Inn, which is the oldest building in England's Watton Under Edge, with a history of witches, demons, ghosts, and physical violence. It gives you a creepy vibe to even think about entering this building, which was built in 11. 45. So much has happened over these hundreds of years, it's hardly surprising the memories are etched into the brickwork. As you step through the doorway to this establishment, many have described a feeling of foreboding that encapsulates you. Before the ancient Ram Inn was even built, the site was home to a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. Today, this area is called the men's kitchen and the first room that you will come across. People have often reported hearing a baby crying, sending chills down their spines. The last pint was pulled in the bar area in 1968, but that hasn't stopped any of the previous owners of the inn from enjoying what they once did. There have been sightings of today's patrons sitting with ghostly figures that some didn't even realise were departed. Now that certainly gives me chills and makes me wonder if this has ever happened to any of you. Have you ever felt a strange sensation of unease from someone and you just couldn't put your finger on it? As you climb the very steep stairs, you will notice the dark shadows peering down at you from above. It might be wise for you to grab hold of something as you climb, as people have been physically thrown up the steps by invisible hands. One visitor took a photograph in June 1999 which showed a ghostly apparition that was about the height of a person ascending the staircase. Could this be the spirit that likes to shove people? What do you think? Now, the room which holds an enormous amount of activity is called the Bishop's Inn and is situated on the first floor. The spirits that call this dwelling their afterlife home seem to be very angry and frustrated. A medium was physically assaulted as they stepped foot inside by being flung across the corridor. Later, they also described a feeling that was oppressive and disturbing, which isn't surprising when you consider what they went through. People who have stayed overnight in this room have struggled to fall asleep, with many actually fleeing the property in the middle of the night as they couldn't stand it anymore. Others took one look at the room and refused to stay as the feeling of evil was just so intense. So, let's look at some of the experiences in the Bishop's Inn room and see what makes it so haunted. In this area, two monks have been seen in one corner, shimmering as if coming in and out of focus. By the dressing table, the ghostly figure of a cavalier has been noticed striding across to the other side of the room and then just vanishing into thin air. Many years ago, a man was reportedly murdered as well in this room by someone pushing his head into the fire while still alive, burning him to death. Witnesses have heard the man screaming in the night as he relives his last moments. One plumber who was working here was terrified out of his mind when the ghost of a centurion on horseback suddenly appeared and walked through the wall nearby. When you leave the room, there have been sightings of a ghostly shepherd and his faithful dog walking past the door. So as you can see, this is a very active area. The late owner of the ancient Ram Inn, John Humphreys, said it best, rather a lot for one room. In the attic area of the inn, you have to crouch as the roof timbers are really low down and many have described an overwhelming feeling of sadness in the air. Now this might be due to the murder of a young innkeeper's daughter which took place in the attic in the early 1500s. People staying in the room below have been woken up by the sounds of dragging above their heads as if someone is trying to dispose of a dead body. But it's not only this area that can be creepy as hell to even imagine staying in. There are reports of an incubus and a succubus prowling the bedrooms for victims too. Now for those of you who don't know, an incubus is a male demon or entity and a succubus is the female version. What this type of spirit enjoys doing is having sexual intercourse with the sleeping person who may only believe that they're having a rather spicy dream. In medieval Europe, some believed that a woman who had had sex with an incubus would result in giving birth to something evil like a witch, demon or a child who was horrifically deformed. The question that hangs in the air though is why the hell is this place so active? And the answer might be a simple one. 
The ancient Ram Inn is said to have been built on the intersection of two ley lines, which are said to contain a high spiritual energy. People have investigated this and tracked the ley lines to Stonehenge, that many believe feeds paranormal energy to the building. There are also tales about the ancient Ram Inn's origins too. It has been many different things over the years, including a priest's residence, public house and inn. When St Mary's Church was being built, the building was used to house the many slaves and craftsmen. There is a tale that in the 1500s, when witch hunting and other atrocities took place, a young woman was being hunted by the locals as they thought her to be unholy. Now, this is in a time where if you did not believe or practice Christianity, which was a government sanctioned belief, you were deemed to be a witch and the punishment was very often torture, followed by being burnt at the stake. This poor woman is said to have hidden in the inn before being captured. And today, many have witnessed her poor, tortured spirit reliving her fearful last moments of freedom. Who would ever want to own such a place, you might ask? Well, in the 1960s, John Humphreys bought the property from the brewery with the idea of making a home for his wife, three daughters and himself. From the very first evening, though, the spirits of the ancient Ram Inn made their presence known when he was trying to go to sleep. John described a force that grabbed his arm and viciously dragged him out of bed and across the room. Why did he not just pack up and leave right then? Well, I'm not sure if something attached itself to the poor man, some spirit or other type of entity, as no matter what the place threw at him, he remained loyal and dedicated for the remainder of his life he even lost his wife and daughters while still there, and he stayed. Over the many years that he lived there, until his death, he said he was not only haunted, but attacked often. He found evidence of devil worshipping and sacrifices within the many walls and areas of the property. Under the staircase, for example, the remains of what appears to be sacrificed children were found with daggers that had been broken. It is thought that they were destroyed so that they could never be used again. Not only was this a place of sacrifices, but exorcisms too. People have witnessed strange lights that have chilled them to the bone. John has sadly passed away now, but one of his daughters has taken over management of the establishment. If you are interested in taking a look firsthand at this creepy building with its bare walls, creaking floorboards and active spirits, they are open to the public for ghost tours. But this might not be the place to visit for those who jump scare easily, as the spirits seem eager to send you home with shivers running down your spine.